Every presidential election season brings out the crazies. It didn't matter the color of their skin. It didn't matter their language. It didn't e matter their economic status. It didn't matter whether they descended from nobility or whether they have a, were of a higher class or a lower class. It made no difference. Once you got here, we were all the same. And then we're going to Washington, D.C. to take back the White House. Ah! This is an example of mixing apples and oranges. The state tax is an apple. We are replacing the current tax code with oranges. And I will tell you, it's three agencies of government when I get there that are gone. Commerce, education, and the, um, uh, what's the third one there? Let's see. <laughs> we mock candidates have no chance of winning with the hope that the adults will eventually take over the conversation. I call this silly season. Unfortunately for the American people, it looks like silly season is here to stay. I would do various things very quickly. But if I become president, we're all going to be saying Merry Christmas again. That I can tell you. That I can tell you. I will build a great, great wall on our southern border, and I will have Mexico pay for that wall. We need somebody that literally will take this country and make it great again. The billionaires are proven he can say all the right things and win ratings, but is he capable of taking the most important job in the free world seriously? I give the Donald credit for creating a great campaign, but this has already been done with the current president in office. Americans of every political stripe were hungry for a new kind of politics. A politics that focused not just on how to win, but why we should. A politics that focused on those values and ideals that we held in common as Americans. A politics that favored common sense over ideology. Dr. Ben Carson is a neurosurgeon that speaks to American people with intelligence and poise. If I was trying to destroy this country, what I would do is find a way to drive wedges between all the people, drive the debt to an unsustainable level, and then step off the stage as a world leader and let our enemies increase while we decreased our capacity as a military person, and that's what she's doing. As we continue to peel the onion that is Dr. Ben Carson, Something isn't smelling right. This is a Judeo-Christian nation in the sense that a lot of our values and principles are based on our Judeo-Christian faith. And when, when there are substantial numbers of people who actually believe in the traditional definition of marriage, uh, I'm one of them. Doesn't mean that I don't think other people can do whatever they want to do. But I don't actually believe that they have the right to force their way of life upon everybody else, nor would I try to force my way of life upon everybody else. No, Dr. Carson, nobody has a right to force values on other people. That is what the word separation of church and state means. When you truly decide to understand this, you may be fit to be commander in chief. I believe that marriage is not just a bond, but a sacred bond between a man and a woman. There is a very strong argument uh, that any rogue state, particularly one headed by a person of such uh, megalomania and a history of gross miscalculation like Saddam Hussein, uh, in this new world where you've got organized terrorists with money and means and, and global reach, uh, who could therefore get access to weapons of mass destruction means that we have to put some attention there. I don't think it, has, it can be either or. Now, you know, I voted for the Iraqi resolution and it was a very difficult vote for me. Then there's Hillary, her flip-flops, her support of wars that go nowhere, her insistence that everything's okay, I promise. Do I really need to say anymore? The problem with America today is that we've gotten into celebrity worship. It's no longer about the smartest men and women in the room. It's about who can get the biggest poll numbers, who can make the biggest splash, who can say the craziest things. These are the men and women we're supporting, and it's leading us deeper and deeper into idiocracy. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of America! Yeah! President Camacho! The worship of poll numbers is taking over our common sense, and the men and women with the best ideas are getting drowned out by all the noise. A lot of uh, people are trapped inside the beltway, and they think that war is always the answer. But I'm asking some difficult questions of Republicans. Do you think the invasion of Iraq made it more stable or us more safe? We now have ISIS to contend with. Right. We'll have a nation 
in which both the economics and politics of the nation are controlled by a handful of billionaire families. I see an America where criminal justice is applied equally, and any law that disproportionately incarcerates people of color is repealed. Instead of listening and understanding the problems that are happening in this country and why we keep doing the same things over and over again, we mock them. When they ask for things like campaign finance reform, equal time, and fiscal responsibility, we choose to chase after the shiniest objects and use things like poll numbers to justify why they're sitting in the corner. It says on your chart that you're f***ed up. Uh, you talk like a fag, and you're so retarded. What I do is just say, hey, you, know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I do have hope for the future of this country and the world. Unfortunately, that hope is looking more and more like it'll come when it's too late.